only have five minutes, but uh, I will try to keep in time. So uh, first, the first slide is basically showing something which I think is important uh, opportunity. So we missed or, or we take the opportunity. I think up to now we have been missing the opportunity, but let me explain why, because the second part of your question is extremely important. Is this just an issue of food loss and waste or is an issue which is a lot bigger and clearly as we can see from here, uh, the food systems having extremely challenges to be able to achieve what we want. Uh, we have an enormous amount of people undernourished uh, that will increase with COVID-19, high child stunting problems that are leading to significant impact in the agri-food system and what we call trade-offs. Uh, so, and, and there is a lot of economic and environmental costs that run into the into trillions of dollars. So we are very far from achieving SDG 1, SDG 2, and, and in our case, we also emphasize SDG 10. And, and the point is that we need to get here. Uh, this is where we need to get to levels of undernourishment, which are everywhere reduced to less than 5%. Healthy diets that has to be affordable for all. And overweight and obesity has to be reduced everywhere to the levels of 15%, similar to 1980s. So it's a significant problem uh, which requires focusing on stunting and children. Uh, also recover the lost decade of, of poverty, of rural poverty that is being increased because of COVID-19 and looking at inequality, but also looking at the planet. Uh, we need to achieve a number of, of neutrality in carbon land degradation and increase efficiency in the use of water, agriculture. And we need also to hit the Paris uh, Agreement target of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So in this context, why uh, this is important. So we have 14% on losses, and again, it's important the definitions, and 17% on waste. No? Waste is retail to consumer, losses, post harvest, backwards to, uh, to the producer, and, but 14% and 17%, enormous number. Of course, please be careful, we cannot add those yet because the denominators are different, so we need to be careful. But that's the situation, the situation today. Now, what this means in terms of all the trade-offs, it means enormous numbers in caloric footprint, in magnesium footprint, in blue water footprint, phosphorus footprint, carbon footprint, and land footprint. And I don't want to go through all of them, but, but I think it's important to realize by each type of the value chain or the different commodities, how important this is. And this is just the footprint for food losses, not waste. Okay, so this is a calculation of FAO on, on the sofa, just for food losses. So, so this is something uh, crucial that we need to look at. And the case of, of, of losses is a triple win because you will improve food security and nutrition, more food will be available. Losses are the highest in high value commodities and it will improve productivity. And of course it will improve the use of natural resources and greenhouse gas emissions. But to be concrete to your question and, and where we need to, to, to focus. So first I think we need to do a business case for food waste and loss. We cannot impose things to farmers, which are businesses and also to consumers. So I think building up the business case is, is essential to be able to achieve what we want to, to achieve. Uh, and we have heard excellent examples from the speakers on how this can be done. Uh, we are working, for example, also in, 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 in coal value chains, but more mobile and linked to warehouse systems to create financial institutions, working together with colleagues of IFPRI. But, but we, we are trying to, to push business case situations. We need to have cost-effective solutions and bring this up. But how, how we are able to do this, we also need to, to, to keep in mind the ambition. Also, we need to change the landscape that business operates, as you mentioned before. And this is really important because this affects governments, development banks, and private sector. We need to provide incentives for this to happen. And clearly, it's not just an issue of targeting food waste and loss. We know that the major reductions in food, loss, in food losses, especially, could happen just by improving infrastructure by improving access to energy, by improving access to, uh, to, to roads and improving access to local markets and so on. That will substantially reduce the effects that we are facing today. So that broader approach and targeting investments to try to attract the private sector, I think is central and that's rural infrastructure and also looking at intermediate cities, which is where more, more of the processing is, is happening. Another broader dimension that requires careful look is, is policies, uh, because we need to look at policies that are not only incentivize food loss and waste. And this is subsidies, for example, lack of standards. We have done studies with, with Luciana Delgado, Nakasone, on how to find solutions to the lack of standards and find mechanisms that will allow that. We also need to, to, to account the true cost to society of losses. People eat things, but they don't know what is the real true cost and prices are not reflecting that. Also, we need to increase enormously the acceleration on data, innovation, 
technology and complements. On, on data, we have done a huge effort to accelerate in the last years, uh, working with Luciana Delgado and, and Monica Schuster uh, from IFPRE and from WWF. We have developed a new methodology to measure losses where in the value chain and to include quality. The FAO has also developed a significant progress in how to measure losses. Now NEP came with the waste, but we need to keep doing this and we need to find solutions which are easy to use. We also have to bring innovation and that's the digital technology which could help how we can link this to the financial systems and, and technology and also the complements, the institutionality behind. Influencing the consumer choice will be central, but that's something that is complex, it's not easy. It requires regulations, it requires to change of legislation. FAO has a whole area on legal to try to do that, but we need to start to make people understand, and that's why the reason of my first two slides, that the problem that we are facing. So we need to create a change, a movement, a thinking differently. You know, we are developing the code of conduct on food laws and waste that will be approved, I hope, uh, for in the next conference of FAO, but it's central that countries start to understand the problems, the definitions, and they start to put policies in place. If they don't understand that and they don't come into link into the code of conduct, it will be very difficult. But also we need to inform consumers so that they change their behavior so that this works better. And finally, I think it's important that we act in parallel. It's not just an issue of developed countries' waste and developing countries' losses. I think it's clear that losses and waste occur in both places. So the policies that we are implementing should be implementing across the board and we cannot wait and put priority in one in one place and in the other. But it's also important to mention, and, and we, we did a huge review uh, on all the literature around in terms of what the technology being used for reduction of food losses and the number of cases that are successful and are cost effective are pretty, pretty small. Just looking at post-harvest technologies. So let's not believe that we have the solution. We don't have them. That's why technology also plays a crucial role. And that's something that we need to look carefully. But right now, looking at thousands of papers and thousands of evidence, solutions are not there. And for smallholders especially. Drying technologies for smallholders are unexistent. Okay, storage facilities not necessarily work properly. So again, we need to find and to work and to bring more evidence on what could work in the future. Thank you very much, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and I think a lot of this was covered in a special issue that we did uh, together uh, as a result of the SOFA. Uh, so, so let me, let me on, the, on the food waste question and effectiveness, uh, let, let me separate in, in three buckets. There is, as it was mentioned before, the, the prevention, that's central and that's very cost effective. It, it will require behavioral change, of course, and it will require legislation change in some cases. That's why the legislation part is really important because of the standards issue and what can be consumed in how many days. But the behavioral change is really important because uh, we, are, we are not used uh, uh, to consume things that don't necessarily look good when sometimes they taste the best rather than the ones that look good. So I think that's, that's the first bucket, no things that can easily be done and can imply significant, significant results. And why it's so important? Because we know that if we want to reduce emissions, for example, the products in the market are the ones that have the most emissions accumulated. So it's the best way to, to minimize the problem of emissions. The, 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 the second bucket is, okay, what, what that, that the things that will go to landfills, no matter, assume that we were able to change uh, behavior of consumers and so on, uh, and what to do, what would to do with those? And that's where the circular economy plays, plays a role. And there are different things. You can use Dubai products. There is significant experience right now in China and the US and other countries converting that food wasted into energy, for example, uh, and then converting the, the results into pellets of fertilizer. So there is a lot of innovation happening at large scale. Now, of course, that depends on the quality of what you are wasting, because to burn something to create the energy uh, is complicated. So the quality is important uh, of, of the waste that, that you're throwing. So in, in the poorest countries, not necessarily we will be able to do that, but in the richest countries, for sure, we can do that. Uh, and that's another byproduct. Then the other option is, okay, how we can use it for other processes and other uh, produced products. But one topic which is also important is the expansion of the shelf life. Uh, I think that is crucial and there is a lot of technology on that that, that, that can be used and, and can be very helpful. The second question on, on the zero food losses and zero waste. Uh, clearly zero is not the number here. Uh, the, the issue is that it's too high that we have to reduce it. But again, as I mentioned, the important thing is the business case. No? Because if you reduce losses for a farmer, that could imply ceteris parius that the farmer will have more supply available and that could affect, if it is local market, the, the income they get because they will be able to have a lower price and not necessarily the more quantity will, will benefit 
in the reduction in, in, in their profits because of a lower price. So again, the business case scenario, farmers are businessmen. We need to think in that sense, I think is central. And, and of course, the idea is to have targets which are realistic. And as we move, uh, we will see how close to zero or close to five or close to 10%. But, but having in high value commodities losses of the level of 30% doesn't make any sense when we have a problem of, of healthy diets. The same, I think, applies to food waste, but food waste has a concrete target, which is 50% in the SDG. Losses doesn't have a concrete target. It's just reduction of losses. So we need to be very careful. And finally, on the incentives and the subsidies. The, the, the problem we have today is that we even have subsidies to loss, basically, to generate loss and waste, because food is being subsidized in certain things, and that creates incentive to don't care too much about it, because it's, it's cheaper than it should be. And that's something that we need to, to assess and countries need to assess which are the policies that could be against reduction of food waste and, and food loss. But also on the positive side, I, I think will be very important to create mechanisms that will facilitate uh, the reduction, especially of losses. Because in losses, uh, as we have been seen in, in the studies we have been working, uh, a lot of them are pre-harvest. We have focused a lot on the post-harvest and in the storage, but a lot of the losses occur pre to the post-harvest. And many of them is left in the field, for example, because of the quality of the seeds and so on. And that requires government investments to improve the standards, to improve seed availability, to, to improve the technology that we are using. So again, we need to start thinking carefully where in the value chain this is happening and try to understand better why it's happening. And that's when we will get a better cost returns in terms of the investments. And normally we jump into a solution and we don't look at the whole process uh, plastic bags, hermetic plastic bags, many people talk about them, but if you don't dry the grain, it won't work. Uh, and again, you will continue losing. And the same applies for high value commodities. Thank you.